In the much warmer waters of the Atlantic Ocean that surrounds the islands of the Bahamas, new research is giving us fresh insight into another of the ocean's predators, the shark. Zoologist Lucy Cook and Dr. Tristan Guttridge are off the coast of Bimini, heading to a lagoon hidden in the mangrove forests. You can just see the little clearing there oh, with yeah. that sand oh. tongue. God, it's really hidden away. To get there, they have to make their way down a narrow corridor in the mangroves. But researchers recently discovered that young sharks were able to use this lagoon as a safe haven to rest and feed in as they grew up. The roots make it too small for large sharks to fit through. Wow. So, this is it. Yep. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. God, you'd never know it was here, would you? This unique research site is showing that instead of being the lone, mindless, mechanistic killers most people think of, sharks could be social, make friendships, and even have personalities. It's not long before the first inquisitive shark comes to investigate. There we go. Nice, beautiful one coming. Really healthy looking sharks in here as well. The sharks here are juvenile lemon sharks, short-nosed and stocky. Adults can grow up to three meters long and have powerful jaws. At the moment, they're just patrolling around, they're very calm. They look kind of cautious, actually. To be, to be honest, they look more nervous of me than I am of them. Yeah, absolutely. It was long assumed that sharks, who are generally loners, would only communicate with each other to fight over food or mate. But their behavior here is suggesting that's not the case. What we found over the years is that they actually follow each other. They, they socialize in this area. So they're not just kind of randomly swimming around solitary. They actually are following each other in groups and they switch groups and change groups over time. And they seem to have actual kind of friends, really, that they prefer to associate with. Wow. But when researchers put food into the water to observe what happened when sharks fed, there were further surprising insights into their behavior. What you'll see is that some will come in sooner than others. And I don't think it's purely because one is hungrier than another one. It's actually one of them will probably take a greater risk than the other one. So you can do that and then wiggle it. That's it. Here's one coming in now. Oh, look, they're coming in! <laughs> That's it, and then let him go. This is quite a big one. Pretty soon, they are surrounded by over a dozen sharks. Oh, there's a lot of them around now. Wait. Woo. Now they're really getting excited. There you go. They do all seem to behave in different ways towards the food. Some really play the tough guy. Hey boy, <laughs> just calm down. Others are a little more shy. You've got him. Hello, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> see him shake his head? <laughs> yeah. You can see some of them are less inquisitive than others. Some of them come steaming in. Mm. And it, I think it's the same with lots of animals, that they have these different personalities. Ooh. Fantastic. Tristan has been putting his observation that sharks might have different personalities to the test. Personality used to be seen as a highly developed trait only found in dogs and primates. Okay, if you want to hop over here, oh, yeah, so I okay. don't want to... So, how will the sharks Hello? fare? Yeah, lovely. To start, they need to transfer the first subject into the test pen. Goes. This test is designed to see if the sharks have different personalities by seeing how they react when an unfamiliar object, 
a stripy pole, is lowered into the pen. Let the test begin. The first shark almost immediately goes to investigate the new object. And uh, check it out. Slight... That was boldness. Certainly that... wasn't scared of it. Wasn't scared yeah. of it. I thought it went in and it came in and it went and checked it out. Before we lowered that, it was circling round the edge. And now it's completely changed its behaviour and it's just doing sort of pass-bys, isn't it? It's totally checking it out. Mm -hmm. It's a bold shark. It's a bold shark. It's time to test the next shark. Will it behave differently and show it has a different personality? I reckon this one's going to be timid. Timid? Yeah. I'm going bold. You're going bold on this yeah. one. Yeah, I am going bold. The second candidate seems determined to avoid the stripy pole altogether. It's hugging the edge. Yeah, nowhere near as much interest. But you can see the difference between the two. That's the cool thing to pick out. Tristan and his team have repeatedly tested over 300 sharks. Each one consistently showed its own unique response to the object. And this suggests, for the first time, that sharks really do have personalities. So this isn't just a freak that it's bold today, but it could be timid tomorrow, that you believe that these are fixed personality types? Absolutely. So if we test this shark next week, it should do the same behaviour, or very similar. Cool. We're only just beginning to understand the complexities of shark communication and interaction, but the team believe that having different personality types actually helps sharks as a species to thrive. They can exploit all the food sources available to them, with some who pick off the easy targets and high rollers who take on the big prey. For sharks, it seems success isn't all about physical perfection. Personality plays a role too.